Sean, in one sentence, what is your business? Lovebox is building a world where technology is not just about connecting people, but filling their lives with love, joy, and happiness. Okay. And what problem are you solving? Well, to be happy, you need to dedicate space and time uh, for happiness. And this is what our products are doing, creating a space at home and requiring you some time every day to have a happy life and spread happiness around you. And how does your business solve this, this pain point? Well, we created a box called the Love Box that you set up uh, in your home. Uh, it's a wooden box, which... Uh, can receive messages and whenever there is a message your heart in front spins until you open it to read the message and you can receive two kinds of messages uh, photos drawings or love notes from your loved ones from anywhere in the world or you can also subscribe to content that make your life happier for example you can receive daily positive affirmations for your mental health or relationship tips uh, you know for your long distance partner and so on and what will revenue be this year uh, six million dollars and what is the big vision of the company my big vision for this company is that everyone in the world has one of our devices at home to have a happy life. Just like everyone is bringing a mobile phone when they get outside of home, they have one of our devices to be happy. And why are you the right person to achieve this vision? Well, first of all, I love technology. I love building stuff. This is my background. And second of all, well, I have a very deep connection to this product because I created it uh, initially for my partner when I was in a long distance relationship. And so I just love the product I built. I built it for myself and I wanted to spread it now uh, everywhere in the world. Why are you raising money on WeFunder? Well, we realize that we can be much more profitable and scale this business for recurring revenue with uh, Lovebox channels. And so now we need to deeply invest in that. And why on WeFounder specifically? Just because our mission talks to everyone. And so we want the whole world to invest in our company, not just, you know, a few VCs. Can you talk a little bit more about the business model? So obviously you sell the device and then you talked a little bit about the subscription side. Help me understand, you know, how that business model breaks down, like rough idea of what margins look like, that sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. So basically, the, the we sell the device. There are different versions of the device. It starts at uh, $100 if you just want to send and receive text messages. And it can go up to almost $200 for the limited editions. With, uh, For example, we have a beautiful Kiss herring for the, the, the who love this artist uh, edition. And then, so you pay for the device. We have over 50% 50, 50 margins overall. Uh, it's obviously more in uh, more margin when it's on e-commerce, a bit less margin when for retailers. That's a, a good, already a good margin on the, on the hardware. And then, so of course, it's free to use if you just receive photos and text. But then if you want to, you know, have some content to make your messages better or to subscribe to the channels I just described, then you need to pay for a subscription, which can be either, you know, $5 a month or about $50 uh, a, a year. Got it. Okay. So people can sign up for $5 a month or they can do the annual plan at 50. Exactly. And I assume that it's since that's like every... software driven, it's very high margin. Yeah, exactly. So this is, you know, like a lot of companies like us, like the selling the hardware device is not the most profitable part. And then, right. but then you know, you are improving the lifetime value of the customers. In it. And, you know, there is no more marketing costs. And so all the additional revenue is really high margin and um, and without any marketing costs uh, involved. So that's that's what makes the business model really interesting. You know, if it was just selling the box, it would not be necessarily the best investment opportunity. <laughs> but um, with the subscription, it's very different because basically, you know, next year we are forecasting to cover 100% of our operating costs with the subscriptions. So oh, wow. basically, we will not need to sell new devices anymore. It will just be, you know, for to scale. So that's yep. uh, that's how the business model works. That's great. Can you talk a little bit about kind of your marketing strategy as well as your distribution channels? Yes. Um, so we are more like a direct to consumer business. Um, so we eighty percent of our sales are through uh, our Shopify store, Amazon, number two marketplaces and we have but we have a little bit of like premium stores selling the device for example we have the you know museum of modern art the moma store 
uh, which is a design store, which is selling a device, and um, uh, urban outfitters as well. well. A few like very high end um, uh, retail stores, uh, but this is not like the the main strategy has not been to go through these distributors uh, at the beginning. But you know now we are starting to invest in that, and actually part of the investment will be used to develop, uh, you know, to grow sales team, to grow more of this uh, other distribution channels, especially because now marketing costs, digital marketing costs are increasing. So now yeah. it becomes more profitable and more interesting to de develop a more like omni uh, strategy. And maybe I can talk a little bit about a change in our marketing strategy that uh, so far we were more like focused on selling the device and then selling the subscription on the app and mm -hmm. something we're going to experimenting. Uh, we, we're going to be experimenting uh, this year and the next year. And this is also what we're raising money is selling the subscription, the whole thing at the subscription from the beginning. So be, maybe, and it's it's going to be experiment. So it's not like a commitment, but maybe you're going to pay $10 a month for the device and the subscription. And then you can cancel and return the whole thing anytime. What's gonna be the impact on conversion rate, lifetime value, we don't know. So, but but that's why also we need money to be able to invest in this kind of thing. Or maybe you're gonna pay, you know, $70 a year. And then again, you can cancel anytime. And so it's a, it's gonna be like a hardware as a service, um, you know, model. And uh, we are very excited to starting, you know, this uh, experiment. And uh, so we'll see how it goes. But so it's not like necessary to, to, to thrive, but I think it could be a great growth opportunity because suddenly maybe we could see much higher uh, conversion rates. Yeah, it makes sense. Awesome. In the comments below, tell me if you invested in Lovebox on the refunder campaign. And be sure to check out our other video where we do a much deeper dive into the whole love box story. You can find that link in the comments. So what did you think? That was pretty great, right? The whole conversation reminded me a lot of this blog post from years ago when Jason Calacanis wrote one of the very first checks into Calm, which was this mental health wellness app and talking about how it had to be raised by people like him on AngelList because there weren't like, like VCs wouldn't see the vision. And I think there's some similarities here where, you know, as a VC, like I'm wondering, like, is this really interesting? I don't know, but I can definitely see how, I mean, look, they've got 6 million in revenue, some significant traction, profitable, uh, clearly like there is a market here that I think a lot of other VCs would have missed out on. And so I think it makes a ton of sense why they're raising on WeFunder. So some things that I like, I'll tell you, like, I love the fact that they're, they've generated that much in revenue. Like clearly they have product market fit with uh, their core demographic today. Love the fact that they're profitable. I think that's great. I mean, clearly like we didn't talk a lot about like what their e-commerce metrics look like, but the fact that they're profitable means that like those, the unit economics of this business appear to be working. I also love the uh, recurring revenue side of what they're doing. I think that's fantastic. You know, I'm an investor in Wise, which does uh, Internet of Things uh, and smart cameras. And a big chunk of their revenue uh, is from their subscription business. And a big reason uh, why I'm a huge fan of that company and, and from a business model perspective. And so they have a lot of similarities to that, which I think are super important. And like I said in the video, you know, recurring revenue is just so valuable because it comes in every month. It's a uh, very, very high margin typically, especially compared to like a one-time product sale where you have to go find that customer every single time you want to sell another product. Whereas re with recurring revenue, it's that same customer and they just keep paying you again and again and again. And generally the market and investors will put a very high multiple or, or a very high valuation on that type of revenue compared to like the more one-off revenue that they would get if they were just a plain hardware products company. So let's talk about risks. And remember when it comes to risk, you always want risk in a deal, right? If there's no risk, then either you don't know what the risks are and you're going to get cheated out of your money, or there just probably aren't very many returns, uh, very much return there. Risk isn't important, but it's important to understand what risks you're taking on. Some of the risks, not all of them, but some of the risks that I think about on this deal, the fact that it is hardware and hardware is hard, right? They, they're going to have to come out with like new products. 
uh, margins are relatively low compared to, you know, software, for example, it's a one-time sell. A lot of those things related to the hardware um, are definite risks, right? It also takes a lot of capital. So you have to put up a lot of capital in order to buy the product, have it manufactured, shipped overseas, sit in inventory and ship out, right? And that just requires a lot of working capital. And so companies live and die based on how much cash and cash flow they have at any given time. And so when you have business models that eat up a lot of that cash, like in a hardware business, that can be a significant challenge on that company. The other thing that makes me a little bit nervous is, and I kind of alluded to this in the conversation, is I don't know if this is really a fad, right? Is this like a cute product that people buy today and then tomorrow it's something else that's new and, and totally displaces this? But I do think that what is interesting is when you talked about how, you know, 50% of their customers stick around after 12 months, clearly like people are using this and a lot of people are using this on a go forward basis. So I think that's good. The other question that I think a lot about mm -hmm. is like market size and, you know, clearly like the market potential is like really big, like pretty much anybody uh, could theoretically want this. The flip side though is, you know, you may decide like, hey, this is not something you want, right? How many other people are like that? Part of the challenge here with market is that even if your market is big, right? Like everybody could theoretically want this. The degree to which they feel this pain point and are searching for a solution here ultimately relates directly into what your marketing spend looks like. And so you could have a huge market, but it may become prohibitively expensive to market to that entire market over time. And so what I don't know is how big is, call it the profitable customers that are out there. I worry just a little bit that it might be small. And then the last thing is, this is uh, revenue-based financing. So the good thing is, is that it acts kind of like debt. And you could argue like, look, as long as the company doesn't go out of business, there's a good chance that I'll get a good return here. The downside is you are kind of capped on your upside. This is still like a relatively early startup. It's not like the risk of them going out of business is zero. It could be, you know, relatively high and the return you're getting, you're kind of capped at that 2x. Now, in this particular case, I think some pushback on that would be, they're already at 6 million revenue, they're profitable, clearly the business model is working. And so your downside risk is a lot lower than a company that maybe didn't have as high revenue, wasn't profitable, didn't have a clear market, didn't have a recurring revenue base, right? Some of those other things, but it is just something that you should be aware of. Anyways, hopefully this was an interesting video, interesting pitch, interesting company. If you wanna learn more, be sure to check out wefunder.com forward slash lovebox. They've got a lot more diligence materials there that you can dig through, some questions there. And let me know down in the comments if you ultimately ended up investing and what you think. Like, is this a good investment? Is it not? Where are the risks and where do, that you see? Anyways, thanks for joining and be sure to check out some of my other videos. Mm -hmm.